Hey, I'm Tony Northrup. Let's talk about sound for people who want to do YouTube and vloggers. We've been we've been doing this for like five years now, and I think we've traveled to, to maybe 20 countries and recorded video. And so we've recorded video at every budget from you're a dead broke YouTuber making absolutely no money to uh, recording in this studio, which has cost us tens of thousands of dollars. So I'm going to talk to you about talk to you about how to get great sound at any price point from a real practical getting stuff done kind of perspective. First, I think everybody starts with the on-camera mic. You stick your camera on a tripod or a desk or something and just start recording. And that's not good. Uh, our producer, Justin, who, by the way, has like a professional sound education, is currently recording. So we can switch between the on-camera mic and this fancy broadcast mic. <laughs> Sounds different, right? And this is in a professional studio with acoustic foam. If you go outside, the on-camera mic gets much, much worse. So let's look at a side-by-side -side sample of that. An articulating screen sure would be nice for this kind of shot. So I wouldn't have to get down low and on my knees when I want to work low to the ground and get something nice in the foreground. Another quirk with this Canon, mirror lockup doesn't work with live view mode for some reason. So I could compose it in live view mode and then turn it off and then turn mirror lockup on to use it, but can't we make that work together? It is just a beta camera. Okay, so please don't use the on-camera mic. I still see YouTubers using the on-camera mic. Unless it's very close to your face, it's gonna sound terrible. There are ways to get way better sound. You know what? People, if your video is a little screwed up, if it's a little bit shaky, the color's off, the resolution is low, people don't mind that much. If your sound's a little bit off, you're gonna get like a thousand comments about it. It happens all the time. We first that was still get screwed up. It just happens because that's the real world. But that's what upsets people. People tolerate a lot more uh, video problems than they will sound problems. So you got to get that sorted out if you're going to be a little bit pro at this. Shotgun mics. Everybody, when I first started this, everybody's saying, get this in this shotgun mic, stick it in the hot shoe of your camera, and plug it into your camera. You'll get way better sound. Shotgun mics suck <laughs> for the vast majority of types of recording that people do. They're, they're just not good because... The single most important thing in good sound quality is proximity. You want to get that mic close to the source of the sound, close to your talent's mouth, close to your mouth. And shotgun mics are still far away. So they're going to be picking up a bunch of ambient sound. That sound of the washing machine going, it's going to be just as loud as your voice. It's going to be really, really distracting. So we have tried a bunch of different shotgun mics and never gotten decent results out of any of them. So I'm not going to recommend a shotgun mic. I just wanted to tell you that. Try not to go down that path. The one-time shotgun mics, well, if you have a sound guy with a shotgun mic on a boom, okay, you can make that work. But I'm imagining that most vloggers out there don't have a, sh a sound guy with a boom. Uh, but putting the shotgun mic on your camera, slightly better than the on-camera mic if that's your only option. But we have better choices out here. One, and this is going to be completely free for you because I bet you already have a smartphone. Just use your smartphone. I've done this before. I just have an audio recorder app. You can get free apps. Mine's free. And I'll fire up the audio recorder app and start recording and put it in your pocket with the mic up towards you. And right away, it's going to be a big improvement over your on-camera mic. One step up from that is to uh, throw a little lav mic onto this. So you can get, here's a $13 lav mic that you can get. You plug it right into uh, the, the jack on your phone, clip it onto your shirt, and your sound is going to get much better right away. Um, one step up from that is a mic that we use all the time, which is the Rode Smart Lav mic. And I think this is the only piece of equipment here that that we've gotten for free. Rode sent this to us. Everything else we bought on our own. Nobody here is a sponsor. They didn't even ask me about this. They just <laughs> randomly sent it out of the blue. And sure enough, we ended up using it and endorsing it because sometimes that's how things work. But the Smart Lab mic, we've used it in a lot of different places and when you're traveling. And um, it really sounds pretty good. You can just plug it into your smartphone. They have a special app for it, but you don't have to use that. And um, I'll just clip it on my shirt here. If you're filming a zombie movie, you probably don't want the lav mic appearing in the film. For most of us vloggers, people are going to totally understand that you have a lav mic there. Another option is to plug in your headphones and use the mic built into your headphone cord. It does a pretty good job.
Another option is the Zoom H1. This is the Zoom H1. It's about a hundred bucks and it just does a great job. And uh, what do you know, it's actually been recording this whole time. It has physical switches on the back that make it very easy to fire it up and get it started. It has pretty fantastic little mics on top of it that will record ambient sound if that's what you need. So if you're having a conversation between three people, you can just start this thing recording and put it right in the middle of the table there and it will do a pretty good job without somebody having to man it. You can also do the trick that I do with my pocket. You'll see some of our videos, I'll have one of these right here. Or if you're at a conference and you're talking and actively interviewing other people, it works pretty well for that. You can hold it up to people's mouths and uh, pass it around like a real microphone. 100 bucks records to a micro SD card, does a great job. And it can also take uh, proper lab mics. Note that there are two types of 3.5 millimeter mic connectors. Three ring TRRS types like the Aelmon and Rode models I'm suggesting are for use with a smartphone. If you want to plug a three ring lav mic into a recorder like an H1 or directly into a camera, you'll need a two ring TRS type, not TRRS, like the Sennheiser ME2 that I'm going to show you in just a little bit. Or you can buy a TRRS to TRS adapter like the Rode SC3. And so now for a hundred bucks, I have, well, a hundred bucks plus, plus the cost of whatever mic you're using, I have a wireless lav mic that I can use. And that's fantastic because I'll show you some more expensive lav mics in a little bit. Now you can't easily monitor, you can't have somebody else monitoring their sound. You're going to have a separate audio source when you use this. So you have to sync the sound later. There are YouTube videos on how to do that. You can sync the sound pretty easily between the on-camera mic and your off-camera source. You'll get much better sound out of it. Okay, let's move on one step up to proper wireless lav mics. With a proper wireless lav mic, your sound goes directly into your camera because what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the receiver, this is the receiver, here's one that has a cable attached to it, <laughs> and you're gonna put it on the, the shoe of your camera, the flash shoe here, right where the flash would go, and then you're gonna take the cable and just plug it right into the mic jack. And it's gonna be wirelessly connected to the microphone pack that your on-camera talent is wearing. Maybe that's you. And the sound is fantastic. The vast majority of the videos that we record outside of the studio are using wireless lav mics like this. Here's what my lav mic sounds like. You can see it's not as full and rich, uh, but it's pretty good and it doesn't require you to have a big <laughs> mic that you're traveling around with. You know, you can also wear them when you're out and about and people really don't notice or comment on it. Like they don't think it's a big deal. So you can still be discreet in public places using a lav. Why did I not mention one of those 20 foot wired lav mics? Because you can get wired lav mics <laughs> that are just really long and connect into your camera. But I promise you at some point, if you wear a long lav mic, you're going to trip over it and you're gonna bring your whole camera crashing down and it's gonna wreck your camera and that's gonna cost you way more than a used wireless lav mic would. This happens all the time. I talk to other YouTubers too uh, and they're like, yeah, that happens. <laughs> so don't use one of those long wired labs things. They're, they're uh, just an accident waiting to happen. You know, you're gonna get up, you have to go to the bathroom, check your teeth or something. It's a mess. So the wireless labs I recommend are the Sennheiser EW100G2s. They don't make these anymore, but you can pick them up used. So this link down here takes you to eBay where you can pick up a set for about 200 bucks. And that's pretty cheap because brand new quality wireless labs will cost you about 650 bucks. We have the new version of these as well. The G3 from Sennheiser, there's even a G4 now but we still use the G2. Why? Because we there's no difference in sound between the G2 and the G3s. The G3s, uh, they have a couple of nice features that make it a little bit easier to set up, but the G2s are just fine. So pick up a used version while you can. The one thing I'll warn you about buying these used is that the mics, they, have, they come with fantastic mics, the Sennheiser ME2 mics. These things wear out because the the cables just get bent when people are putting them on and off and they get bent here so they will over time wear out and if you pick up a used one chances are good that the mic that you get with it is isn't going to be perfect so you might have to actually replace the mic and i don't recommend buying used me2s when you do go to replace it the mic itself is 150 bucks 
who've tried a bunch of cheaper lav mics and none of them work quite as well. So for that reason, I'm still recommending full priced ME2s. Nothing else is quite the same. You know what? There are a lot of wireless lav solutions out there and we've looked at a lot of them and I've talked to other YouTubers who are using different wireless labs and I'm still recommending the Sennheisers. They have levels on them so you can measure the levels that you're getting at the microphone and at the receiver and that's really important for troubleshooting different problems. Um, they will notify you if the microphone is actually muted so you can you're, if you have a separate sound guy you can help troubleshoot that kind of thing they just they would just work in practice they work every single time no mystery and and the thing about sound is you can if you screw up your sound a little bit you're, you're throwing your whole shot away <laughs> you can spend a day out filming and then you'll get back and realize that it's a little bit screwed up you won't believe it but i published a video recommending video cameras for vloggers and a bunch of people said they were using video cameras that don't have headphone jacks you really need a headphone jack because you need to be listening to your sound even if you're recording yourself record yourself and then play it back and make sure that the sound is okay so you can re-record it right away getting good sound is critical and the last thing you want to do is find out before it's too late to refilm stuff if you want to hook up two lab mics to one camera, you can do that because cameras have stereo inputs, left and right channels, right? But microphones are mono. So you can hook up two mono mics to a single stereo input and you'll have one person on the left channel, one person on the right channel. Chelsea and I do that all the time. Then in your editing, you just break out the um, stereo source into two mono sources. These are 10 bucks, sdp.io slash breakout. A shoe tripler is another accessory that we find an absolute must this thing. Uh, you stick it in the hot shoe up here and then you can stick two mics on and a light or something else. You can just stick a couple of different accessories. It also just gives you a little more flexibility about where you position that so it's not sticking into your forehead or something. 25 bucks at this link down here. A dead cat. Wind is a pain and you can't do anything about wind in post. It's just going to ruin your sound. But at the time of recording, Dead cats, which they sometimes call furries, go over your mic. And you can get dead cats in any size for any sort of mic, from shotguns to huge mics like this. Uh, this is one that just goes over a little lab mic, and it makes all the difference. We took way too long to start using these. But in the wind, you'd be amazed. You can be in, like, hurricane-style winds, and the dead cat will do a pretty good job of cutting it down. They're cheap. If you're recording inside, if you're doing a podcast or something... Uh, and you're recording directly to a computer, the, the Blue Yeti is a fantastic mic. And we have one. I can't show it to you now because we sent it out to uh, Siobhan, our producer out in Philly. If you watch the live show, that's what she's talking into lately. It's a fantastic mic. You can change the pattern to be omnidirectional or directional. Anyway, it's just it's a pro-quality mic. USB goes right into your computer. If you you want an XLR mic that's going into like analog or digital sound equipment, like proper racks, like what we use. We use the Rode Broadcaster. I looked at a bunch of different mics and the sound from these is fantastic. And they're actually pretty cheap for what they are, for the quality. They go for about 420 bucks. Um, you can pick them up used too, because they're pretty much, they, they pretty much last forever. So if you find a better deal used, but here this takes you to the Amazon link that can get it. Um, and a few accessories for your microphones, you know, you can just stick your microphone on the stand and the Yeti comes on its own little stand. Um, but it's kind of important to be able to keep the microphone a constant distance from your face. This is for podcasts and stuff. And you might want to stretch or move around a little bit. So it's really nice to have an arm like this that allows you to reposition it. So you don't have to move your body to match where your mic is. It allows you to be a little more comfortable and keep your sound a little more consistent. The swivel mounts like this also help absorb some shock. They don't eliminate it completely, but you know, if you bang against the table, you'll still hear it. This happens all the time because we always drink. <laughs> I put my glass down and it'll still travel up, but it travels up less <laughs> because we have this shock mount um, or the, the swivel mount rather. The shock mount is an extra layer of protection you don't have to use this just with the swivel mount. You can put it on just a regular stand, but it helps to isolate the microphone from sounds traveling up. It doesn't completely eliminate it, but it will help stop vibrations from becoming really loud sound ruining clanks. 
The next thing is just like massive amounts of earth and concrete. If you're doing any recording inside, you figure out pretty quickly that there's way more noise in your life than you ever realize, especially if you're recording in a city or something. There's just a constant stream of cars and horns and airplanes and construction equipment and kids screaming, and you don't hear that in your day-to-day -day life, but when you listen back to a recording, as much earth and concrete between, between you and sound sources as possible. That means if you're setting up your own studio for podcasting or something, find a basement. We're in a basement right now, and it's so much quieter than it is upstairs. There is no substitute for feet and feet of earth and con concrete if you want to isolate yourself from outside sounds. If you want to reduce echo inside a room, echo is a big deal. If you're inside a room with just hard walls, your sound is gonna suck because you're gonna be hearing yourself echoing back. In the mornings, the sky tends to be especially clear too because it, you know, the humidity drops overnight, the temperatures are cooler, and that clear sky gives you more distinct and hard lighting. A lot of people set up for, for their first podcast or something and they're talking right into a wall. It's gonna mess up your sound. Acoustic foam can be had, you can get I don't know, some number of pieces of foam for 40 bucks from Foam Factory at this link here. I don't get any money from that. That's just what I use. And we have covered this room pretty much and it makes such a difference in the sound by just eliminating the echo. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, you need to listen to your sound. And uh, as you're traveling around or something, if you're vlogging, uh, just use your whatever iPhone, smartphone, headphones that came with it, that's fine. Cause you just need to make sure that the wind isn't going right into the mic, that there's not some loud sound that you wouldn't hear otherwise, that there isn't static being picked up from a mic that's fraying, something like that. But you need to be listening back to your sound. If you're recording yourself, record yourself, then go back and play it back and make sure it sounds okay so that you can re-record it before you leave. But if you're recording in a studio and you really want good quality headphones, I'll recommend a couple. We use the Audio-Technica headphones. The M40X is about 100 bucks. The M50X sounds better, Justin says, and it costs about 170 bucks. So you kind of get what you pay for. There are definitely more expensive headphones. And I know people are headphone snobs and they're going to have 100 different recommendations. You can write them in the comments. Those are the ones that we settled on because they're good bang for the buck. Okay, so you're into video, you're gonna have to learn the basics of lighting, storytelling, mood, expression, as well as things like aperture, shutter speed, ISO. I have a book, Stunning Digital Photography. It's about photography, but all those same techniques transfer directly from photography to video, so check it out. And if you are into photography, um, we have books on post-processing, Lightroom and Photoshop, and I have a whole book on buying camera gear, lenses, flashes, uh, things like the difference between studio lights and strobes. A lot of video equipment is covered in my photography buying guide. Those are all just 10 bucks. Go to stp.io slash store to buy it directly from us or just go to Amazon. You can see reviews, buy it directly from there. Like, subscribe, share, hope to help. If you have comments or different suggestions, write a comment down below. I know everybody gets it done in different ways. This is just our own experiences. Thanks.